Can I go back? Can I go back to the definition question? Um, because I think that the definition that was offered is a good one, but it might be. Can you hear me? Thanks. But it but it might be too restricted. Um, because I don't. I think gentrification is a larger issue than displacement. Um, so if we d displacement is an effect of gentrification, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. I mean, it, I think it is a larger process at work here, and that's why I wanted to return to it. And, just, and, and maybe and, and think about the definitions. There's a lot of definitions that come out of the academic literature, um, and that's where I'm that's where I'm coming from as well. And and I know that there's a lot of definitions that come out of experience. Um, so I'm going to offer some of the academic ones, which are really which really are tied to the housing market. That really say you know some of the most conservative say that when when housing prices are increasing. And they just offer sometimes like for 15%, if, if, if housing prices are increasing in the top 15% in a neighborhood relative to the rest of the county, then, and there's a rate of increase, then maybe we could call that gentrification. Um, if, a, if, a, if a neighborhood, for example, has gone from the lower, below, the housing prices that are below the mean within a couple of years up above the mean, and then even significantly up above the mean, then maybe we can call it gentrification as well. And so after that would come some of the displacement. I think, and I, and I don't mean to be a picky academic on it, um, what I, but I think that the definition is important when we move to a policy kind of discussion, that if we're just looking for gentrification, we may not see it. There's some neighborhoods, we, and, and actually what I was able to do is working with some students in the last couple of months, is bring some of these definitions to the San Antonio data uh, and, and to try to test them. So one of them is that economic definition. Do we see significant housing prices relative to the mean in the county? The whole county's going up, but are some, of the, are some neighborhoods going up quicker? And so, are those, and, and at what pace? And we said, well, 15%, are they in the top 15% of change? Then, then, then we'll explore those differently. Or if we see some neighborhoods that have gone from below the mean to above the mean, then let's explore and let's look more carefully at those also. The second layer of, of and you hear a lot about, is the second kind of layer of definitions is the, is the more socioeconomic ones. Not just the real estate market, but are the people changing? Is it a different demographic? Do they make more money? Do they, uh, are they different race, race, race or ethnicity? Are they higher educated? And so actually we again brought some of that data to, to the, 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 the San Antonio housing market. And I should qualify that as that we only looked within 410. There's just too many variables once you get start crossing school district boundary lines and stuff. So we looked within 410 at this data. And we tried to see, well, are there the, some of those socioeconomic the population changes that go along with that real estate data and that real estate change? And I can talk about that if you like. And the third thing that we looked at, which actually turned, became incredibly interesting and could actually bring about an interesting policy kind of conversation was, was where's, where's the money coming from, right? So where's like, like, who's, you know, trying to get a hand on who's buying those houses. And I, and I will tell you this, is well, one of the really interesting things that we found was that in some of those neighborhoods that we've identified where the prices are going up a little higher than you would expect, higher than the, what's going on in the county, or if they've gone from low to high very quickly, you do see a, a higher, in some places, a higher educated um, group of people is moving in, but they're not necessarily making more money. One of the really interesting things was is that a lot of people are buying those houses with cash. And I think that's huge. It's not that the, people aren't necessarily getting mortgages. You see a lot of houses for sale that aren't being bought with cash. And that to me is telling us something. Right? You know those, those signs that say, we'll buy ugly houses? That's, who, that's, that's part of, in some of these cases, these are the, this is who's leading some of it, is that, is that people with actually who have a lot of cash on hand and are, and are picking up houses um, and then do, and then, you know, what we call, there's some flipping going on in some, in some different neighborhoods. So just some, some there's, there's just as far as the definition, and I can't even remember the question you asked me to address right now, um, 
as far as the definition that, that, that drives the work that, that, that you, that we try to do, I think that it needs to be a little bit of a grander one. Because in some of these places, actually, we don't see displacement. Or if we do, it's very hard to track. You know, because when, you know, when we, we often recognize the process in retrospect by looking backwards at it. And then by then, people have moved on and to gather those stories is really difficult. So we're trying to figure out a way to kind of measure it as it goes along. Um, and so we're backing away from displacement but looking at the housing market itself. As far, and in two minutes, I know I've gone on for a bit. But as far as, you know, these traditional definitions, um, people who study housing recognize what's called a housing a housing filtering model. That when housing is built, it's usually built for a particular class of people. They live in it maybe for a generation, and then, and then, and then actually at, as they get older, or to a couple of scenarios, as they possibly make more money as they get older, they'll move to a new house. And because of the way housing has been built in cities like this one, most cities, that housing tends to be further away from the inner city. It's newer, there's more space. Their old house then filters down, that's because of the academic literature, filters down to, the, to, to a different economic group that can then move into it. And it's usually a lower, slow, a, a lower income group, not, not low, low, but just a step lower, because they can't necessarily afford the new house. That's a traditional model. It's understood as a very natural model. I think there's some serious problems in considering it natural because it assumes that housing is just purely a private good. And I think the interesting question is, is that should we consider housing to be a partly a public good, owned by all of us, because it's in our own best interest that we keep it up. Um, so I'm gonna, I know that was long, but I'll take a turn.